Beautiful. Beautiful. Here we are, back on the Ebon Hawk, ready to head to our next destination. Before we do that, there's at least going to be one episode, and possibly two, if not three, Conversation Circle Jerks. It's going to be great. We're going to catch up with the kids, we're going to explore what Jafon will say, and at any moment he could get tired and say, screw this. Remember, he's in it for himself. Also, while looking for the switch weapon buttons and not seeing them on this menu for whatever reason, perhaps because it doesn't expect you to brandish your weapons, I realized that there were these. I don't have to swap people in and out of my damn party to equip and unequip them. Amazing. Handmaiden's robes right here, usable by Handmaiden. Cannot equip Beodoro. Why is that descriptor even there if Handmaiden can only equip these, right? They're not bad robes either. They can even be upgraded with some underlays. I think that's better than the Jedi Master robe. Yeah, although it does allow for regeneration of force points. That plus two charisma would definitely be of greater use. Here is V with her clothes. Anyway, the person Jafon would be most interested in speaking to after everything that transpired. Where'd the color go? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Is that gonna happen again? Is it just because of all the light in here? Possibly. We have a droid processor now. Let's go ahead and install that. Step away. Journal has been updated. All we need now is a droid chassis. Hooray! Also, out of curiosity. Am I recording? Great. Just wanted to make sure. Hey there, little T3 buddy. You know, I won't talk to uh, Kreia with the the serious spectacles on. Why don't we wear our drab brown that we just got from Master Vrook and speak to her? And drab brown appeals to drab brown. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. Have you come with questions? I want you to teach me. Can you tell me about the Jafon Valanu crystal? That crystal is bonded to you. Through you, it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Let me focus on the crystal for a moment. There, now it is fully in tune with you again. Is there something else you wished? Uh... Okay. Apparently V did something to our eyesight. I don't remember this transpiring at all. This topic wasn't available in... Like, earlier. Maybe it only popped up now. Like, after we resolved a plan, it beats me. I was just to get a closer look at Jafon's face, unobscured by headwear. Look at that. I'll be going now. This dark crystal. Yes. Yes! Whatever. Yes? Teach me more about the Force. Very well. What is it that drives you? So this bond we share, I would know more about it, that talks about Force Chain. When V attacked, she did something to my eyesight. Can you teach me any lightsaber forms? I wish to know more about the Force forms. Yeah, we have that Force channel. Can you teach us anything else? That'd be cool. Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? The one that allows me to focus the Force, I guess. It's the one I know. It allows you to recover your strength with the Force more quickly, and it lends strength to your Force powers. It has no other drawbacks. Such a form is a gift, preferred at the Jedi Consulars, and effective in combats where you must fight only through the Force. I hope I don't have any combats like that. 
Teach me more. Very well. What is it that drives you? Uh... You know... What the hell? Can you teach me any lightsaber forms? The Jedi practice many forms, many styles of lightsaber combat. It is good to know them, but not to rely on them. You may have already felt the Shicho, the simplest of the forms return to you as your skill and perceptions have returned. Others may come with time, with experience. Feels if I asked you that before and you taught me the same thing, or said the same thing. I could ask all these other things. Ataru is the one that Master Vruk used. Teach me more about the Force. Very well. What is it that drives you? Ah. Uh, do you have anything new to say I about the Bond? It, it's... I don't think so. When battle is upon us, I... Advantages. Uh... Alright, other questions. Ask. Your answer, huh? What's wrong with your eyes? There is nothing wrong with my sight. I see all that I need. Is it like V's eyes? Were you blinded as she was? There is nothing wrong with my eyes. If need but that. Yes. How do you get around? Close your eyes. Alright. Feel this ship around you. Listen to my words. Hear the sound of the handmaidens training in the cargo hold. Her hands cutting the air. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Hey, T3 has a stuck motivator. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace. The hum of the hyperdrive. Hey, I can hear a catch in it. It's not fully fixed. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper past her breathing and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear. For in fear lies death and... I heard her speaking. You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. Was I always able to do that? That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. You have gained plus one awareness and recovered some of your connection to the Force. And we've also gained influence with her. And experience. Neat! I forgot about that. That's cool. We got plus one awareness! Holy shit! <laughs> Let's celebrate. Woo! We'll put on our serious business goggles. Yeah! We'll put in this retinal combat implant. Now we have 15 awareness. You would never know otherwise. <laughs> yes? Have you come with questions? Yes, and I need some answers. Ask, and I will answer. Did you know Atris at all? Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be. Yet I feel I know her, yes. What do you mean you feel you know her? Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness.
Is that right? Glad someone else sees my way. And you walked her path. Meaning that... She... You think so? I want you to know right now that I'm grinning. And although you can't see that on Jafon's lips... He's grinning too, in his head. I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand, then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me. They believed me responsible for Revan's fall. You trained Revan? You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. Other questions? Ask, and I will answer. Wait, wait, wait. Did you know Revan? Perhaps. I think it is fair to say that few did. Were you the one... Were you the one who taught Revan? He came to me, yes. Both before and after. Before Revan knew himself. And after, in the times when Revan was coming to his own and learning he was more than he had been told. At one time, Revan was my Padawan in times past, long ago. But Revan, when he had learned all he could, had other masters, that fool Ja and other Jedi on other planets. He learned from each, but in the end, he turned back to me. When he realized there was nothing more to be learned from the Jedi except how one could leave them forever. What was Revan like as a student? Revan was power. It was like staring into the heart of the Force. Even then you could see the Jedi he would slay etched on his soul. What do you see when you look at me? You are different. When I look at you, it is like staring at the death of the Force. What? What? So Revan is power, and I'm the death of the Force. Huh. That's neat. Almost like a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, yeah. Yeah, we can work with that. Uh, what else do you know of Revan? Seems like lots of folks like to talk about Revan and Malik and what happened. I know more, but it may not be enough for the answers you seek. What caused Revan to fall, the turn on the Republic? Fall? Ah, already you presume much. You were there at Malakor. Revan's choices were always his own. It was not teaching or circumstance or example. It was him. Listen. I can only pick <laughs> these answer dialogue choices. I have to phrase it that way. <laughs> then what made him turn to the dark side? Become a Sith Lord? Is that what he was? Or was he always true to himself, no matter what personality he wore? And there is something that the Council may never understand. That perhaps Revan never fell. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. I do not believe the Jedi Council changed Revan as they claimed. They merely stripped away the surface and allowed the true self to emerge again, someone who was willing to wage war to save others. But that is my belief, since I knew Revan from long ago, as a master knows their apprentice. So as you would say you know me. Always have to be mindful of Kreia. Every time she answers a question, you have to keep in mind she has an agenda behind all of her words. I know more. Where did Revan come from? I guess I care enough to ask that. Revan had a mother and father, parents, ancestors, like all Jedi do. And when he awakened to his potential, I was there to see it. 
But where he was born, where he came from, I do not know, any more than I know where he walks now. Some said that Revan was born in the outer regions, beyond the Rim, and that's what called to him during the Mandalorian Wars. And after, it was the call of home. Huh. Alright. Yes? Have you come with questions? And I need some answers. Ask, and I will answer. If the Council cast you out, how come Atris and none of the Jedi Masters mentioned you? Did they strike you from the records? Atris never made any mention of you whenever we were there at the Telos Academy. Ignorance. And perhaps they do not remember or care. It is of no consequence to me or to them. You're lying. Am I? Then perhaps you should know. There are techniques in the Force, and as I... Yeah, I forgot that we've already used no, this question chain before. Then you... Uh... Do you know anything about the Sith who pursue us? I know of them, yes. And how much like beasts they had become. Combined, united against the Jedi, they command legions of Sith. But above these legions, there are three who must be stopped. As long as any one of them lives, then we, and all life, are doomed. One bathes in pain, feeds on it for sustenance. The other has ceased being a living being so consumed by hunger that he has forgotten his own flesh. And the last is a creature of betrayals, for without such things there is no hope. The one who bathes in pain, Sile. Yes, of pain he has learned much. Of knowledge, of teaching, he knows nothing. Like the others, he was spawned by the horrors of the Mandalorian Wars. He exists solely to spread his pain to all Jedi everywhere. The Betrayer? Even now she is difficult to see. She must remain hidden for now until the time is right. If not, then all our efforts will be for nothing. In this you must trust me. If she is exposed too soon, then this war will be over before it has begun. What? The hell does that mean? <sighs> Cryptic. Fucking old... <laughs> Ask... Looks like I could, can't, uh... I wanted to ask, like, about the, the third one, though, who one who always hungers, but he didn't appear. I guess we lost our opportunity about that. Alright. I think that's yes. everything we've pretty much seen from from Kray here. At least that's stuff that we have okay. access to hearing right now. Oh. Here we go. Before, when you taught me to listen, I wish to continue that lesson. Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the room of a thousand fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold, and smooth as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. How do you do that with your voice? Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and... From the first movement flows the second. Strike. Repeat. Circle one's opponent. Repeat. Faster. Quicker. If father had been faster. If only father had been faster. If I was faster, I would no longer be the last of my sisters. But does Atrus love him? Jedi do not love. Does Atrus hate him? Jedi do not hate. This journey is harder than any she has sent me on. 
Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General, and I obey, as I did at Malakor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, switch the face of the plus one, I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine, ten. Or in fear. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two, minus two card. Still the total is eight, and I obey, switch. as I did at Malakor. That sound in the background. What is it? Oh, sweet, I can do that to my voice, too. Not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me? I hear you. This, this is incredible. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. What about D3? The droid cannot be read in such a way. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. But I did hear something. From Beodur. Indeed. It is strange that I did not. Maybe it is because I know him better. I served with him. Perhaps. I would not put much weight on such things. <laughs> you notice how her voice gets a bit more bitter, you know? The scalpel comes out. Yeah, Javon notices that too, it's good. <laughs> there was also something wrong with Atten's thoughts. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be. Or perhaps he is simply a fool. I'm gonna see how his bizarre game is coming. Did I command Beodur to serve me using the Force? And is that command so inviolable that he is stuck with me, serving me, for the rest of his days? Fuck, I wish I knew that sooner, man. I could use that kind of skill at the card table. <laughs> Jafon definitely could have used such skill at the card table, for sure. There's a whole lot of opportunity and potential that there's, like, years of his life that have been wasted here. A part of it does feel a little odd. He likes to challenge the rush. He likes winning and money, but... Too often do you hear tales of people who've grown corpulent and complacent with their gains. Jafon lives a hard life, in part because he would be bored if his life were not hard. How much of what his life has been is self-inflicted? And for the first meaningful time in this entire series, we're going to talk to Atten about Pazak. Look, 
I know we've been through some rough times so far, but you need to stop letting it get to you. Aden, look at me. Aden. Damn it, will you look at me? I'm fine, Aden. Well, the signs are starting to show. You don't look like you've slept in weeks, or a year. You know that's not true, Aden. I was unconscious in the Paragus mining facility. It's where I woke up. In the Colto tank. Before I rescued you. I had some questions, Adam. Alright, what did you want to know? <laughs> we have nothing to discuss with them other than Vizak again. Well, Jafan, despite that, is interested enough in seeing Adam's face, at least for a brief moment. And studying Atten, Kreia did say that there was more to Atten than has appeared, and that he would be of no threat. Maybe what he's doing all this time, in looking ways that he's counting cards, or indulging in baser instincts, whatever. Kreia's weird. How about a game of Pazak? Republic Senate rules, since I'm the one with all the money here. Sounds good to me. I'll deal. Let's play. He sits down. We're gonna play added a hand of Pazak, everyone. I'm looking forward to this. It'll be it'll be fun storytelling if he loses. <laughs> Let's keep the tie. Oh, let's take a tie. Mm. I play it now. Whew. Damn. I can't save this one. would have thought that 17 could win so easily, but I just didn't have the cards. Pulls 20 out of a hat. I think Adam is gonna crush your fun here. Alright, he wasn't shut out. Jafon blinks <laughs> in surprise. No, 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 and that's why you should count the ticking in the power coupling, too. What? You're not making any sense. Silent so looks at player frowns. He's not looking at me! Why do I play Pazak? Alright, I'll show you. Let's play. Good match. Now, what are you thinking about right now? Well, I was trying to compute the totals to 20. So that I could be closest to winning. That's how I won that last round. That's what, exactly what happened. That's a little bit of a time, a wipe, screen wipe, and then Jafon won. 
Right. And that's why I play Pazak in my head. Because if you don't, you've left the door open, and anyone could walk right in. You play Pazak to shield your thoughts. No, I play Pazak in my head. But while I'm doing that, it's a lot harder for someone to walk in. It's something you could train me to do? No. I can only teach you to play Pazak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then I want to learn to play Pazak. Good. Now you understand. All right. I'll deal then. If you're ever fighting someone who has the power over your mind, whether light or dark, play Pazak. Start listing hyperspace routes, recite engine sequencers, and when they try to use their powers on you, suddenly it's not as easy as they thought. Jedi do it all the time. And when they walk in the dark places of your mind, they'll use it to hold you by the throat. And has taught you to play Pazak in your head as a way of resisting mental domination, getting you a permanent... Bonus to your willpower saves. Jafon's mind is entirely blown. He never considered playing Pazak in such a fashion. Maybe. Maybe this has always contributed to his mental acuity. The fact that he's been so focused on Pazak, this damn card game. Or maybe. Giving credence to theories that a few others have lobbed in the comments. Perhaps when he after the Mandalorian Wars during the exile when Jafon sealed his brain off and struggled so mightily to forget all of the horrors that happened. One of the reasons that he indulged in games like Pazak was to retain control of his mind so that no one could poke around in there and figure out who he was. And he never realized it until now. And has taught Jafon something. Jafon doesn't know how he feels about that. <laughs> it's like, shit, he's not useless, and shit, Kreia was right. This is a lot to take in. This is a lot to take in. This is a damn lot to take in. In fact, why don't we take a break for this episode? We still have plenty more conversation to do. But... I feel as if that's a good enough point. I'll talk to you later.